Hello, welcome or welcome back. Today we will have a look at the upper thoracic spine and the movement of the upper thoracic spine and how this affects our life. <laughs> so please come to sit on a chair. Preferably in the front of your chair, like the most neutral part of the chair. So you can have a, a mobile pelvis, a pelvis that can roll forwards and backwards equally well, which doesn't happen if you're at the back of the chair. So find this place where you're still sitting on the chair. Stay safe, safety first. And then we start in this position. And we start, we're looking for a motion of side bending and uh, bend a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. What do we need? What do I mean by side bending? So to put that into words, bring your left ear closer to your left shoulder or bring your right ear closer to your right shoulder. And you see, I touched my earlobe and I touched the tip of my shoulder. And this could be, you could do the same as a cue a movement cue, we can direct attention uh, by touch or um, physical cues. So talk about mental and physical. We could think about uh, side bending. Uh, we could think about the earlobe coming closer to the shoulder or we could touch the earlobe and touch the shoulder. And wow, wow, how, how direct is that? And in the same way, it's the same, but it's different. And if you have a mirror or any like shiny surface, maybe your screen is good enough, you could uh, see if what's, what's moving. And if you cannot see, let's get away from this highly visual world. You could close your eyes and try to feel what is moving. Is there a dissection? Is it just like your upper body is moving and your, your lower, your, your, your pelvis is stuck to the, stuck to the, to, to the, to the chair? The question, asking the question, how can we improve this movement? Uh, how can we look at the movement? How can we become more aware of the movement? And at the same time, how can we improve this movement? One strategy, let's, let's start with the pelvis. Maybe the pelvis, is, the pelvis is cemented, cemented onto the chair. It does not move. Like uh, an easy thing we could do, an easy thing. Hello, this is Alphonse, watching you, watching Alphonse. In just a moment from now, I'm going to ask you to lift one side of your pelvis and thus tilt your pelvis to the side, to lift one buttock and thus tilt your pelvis. And please really make sure that the movement is not stuck in your lower back. Protect your lower back. The movement needs to travel up your entire spine. Your entire spine needs to side bend when you lift one part of the pelvis. And if you're not yet 100% sure what I mean, please hold back your limited edition of the Iliad by Homer and just use a small little paperback book or even your hand to shove under your pelvis. So the side bend of your pelvis, the tilt of your pelvis is rather small and you can really explore how this movement, the tilting of the pelvis travels up so you can side bend, you can accommodate this movement in your upper thoracic spine and in your neck, so please take good care of yourself and enjoy this marvelous, maybe even life-changing little lesson. An easy thing we could do, an easy thing is like a wedge one hand under one hip joint. Or if you don't want to squeeze your hand, you could use a book. I prepared a book, The Brain's Way of Healing. I think that's a good um, base <laughs> for further investigation to uh, wedge a book underneath uh, one side of one buttocks. And if, if you do that, um, please, yes, uh, get, get a book, get a pillow, get uh, maybe your smartphone if you have a very sturdy one. Just wedge something underneath your, and then just sit and feel, ooh, oh, that, that feels very sloped. <laughs> It does it like, mm, oh, ah, yes. So when you start to ease into this uh, new um, situation, uh, we, we try to adjust and you notice uh, either you are uh, like a broomstick 
angled or like the uh, power of Pisa to uh, name a famous architectural building. <laughs> you just like, oh. but you could as well have this little side bending, but to which side is it? So, uh, for example, for me, it's the right buttocks that's higher now than the left buttocks, which means the right side could be shorter and the left side could be longer, needs to be longer. And if that happens, the, the head can again be on top of the pelvis and not be displaced, uh, translated in space. And um, well, we could try this on the other side. Let's just let's see Ooh, if you come down. If you come down, in the moment of waking up to symmetry again, uh, it might not feel symmetrical at all anymore, does it? <laughs> So this is so interesting, and these are just uh, the small things. We, we're playing with like little perceiving differences, small differences that make a big difference. And the the power of the, there's books about this, no, and about the, the small things. So try the other side to wedge the same book. Ooh. Oh, oh, for me this is more difficult. This side. So my left side is the long side. My right side is the short side. My left side is more difficult to shorten, and my right side is more difficult to lengthen. And so, for me, when I put the book under the left hip joint, it's, it feels even more disturbing than on the other side. But yet, but yet, are we able to have the side bending? Are you able to side bend, or are you? Like, do we have a evenly, a proportion, that's the technical term, proportionally distributed curve throughout the spine. Like, does, do all the parts participate or are there, are there parts that do not side bend that are just stiffly, like a couple of vertebras that do not, um, how do you say, they do not have any angle in between them, do not articulate in relation to each other. And um, use your hands for your chest to find the ribs on your side. Be careful, these ribs might be tender, not the ribs themselves, but the muscles on the ribs. So when you, when you explore uh, your side bending, if you, if you can side bend. Put the ribs under the armpits and then the ribs go up, like the uppermost rib is right underneath your clavicles. And can they side bend as well? And can, the, can your ear come closer to your shoulder? Can everything side bend? Oh, there was a little crack. And then, and then, it's time to say goodbye to the setup. But bye bye, little setup, and remove the book and to come back down again. And we, this is more like a flat tire. Am, am I, <laughs> how is it for you? <laughs> Do you feel this uh, flat tire syndrome? Uh, it will last for a few seconds and then. Or, or maybe longer, oh my god, something happened to my behind. This is the opposite of what we want. We, people are looking for implants to make their behinds bigger. And this kind of makes the behind feel flatter, but I, this, don't worry, the shape doesn't change. It's just a perception of the changed tone, the changed distribution of your side bending. So this is, we came from below, from the base. We could do the same thing from above. So if your shoulders are up to it, so please interlace your hands, in, uh, the fingers, interlace the fingers and bring them on top of your, on top of your, what is it, the head, the crown. So if you can bring your shoulders up, if you can, yes, like this, you could make this Egyptian eye shape, iris, this shape. Um, what is this shape in a mathematical sense? Uh, a lens, a lens shape. And then uh, once we can start to one side, so for example, the left side, bring your left elbow closer to the floor, uh, which would mean the pelvis is a base and back again, or try to side bend. So what's the difference between just dropping yourself towards the left and, uh, and the side bending motion? 
and then try the same thing to your right side. So the right elbow closer to, is it the floor? Or the right elbow closer to your right hip joint. So how would you have to move, activate everything in between, like working with your legs, with your pelvis to make this into a side bending movement. And then bring down your arms again. So how can we how can we address how can we address the upper part of the chest like this because maybe the movement is in the middle of the body yes we can do this also with one hand just bring one hand on top of the head and then we have the other arm free to reach up for example so we can follow so if you um, have your left hand on top of your hand and bring your left elbow closer downwards You could reach up with your right hand and look at your right hand. So, okay, there's a rotation Rotation and side bending how to, they work together, uh, but how does this connect to the pelvis? Uh, let's try a, a version a little a little genius version to address the thoracic spine and for this we need a little helper so I prepared a towel you can have as well a small pillow and bring up your arm over your head so with your for example the left arm with the left hand will touch to please touch with your left hand your right your right where can it reach actually where can you reach with your left hand if you bring your if you sneak your left hand upwards around your hair towards your right ear so where where can it reach can you reach your chin can you reach the back of your head where where can you where can your left hand move to maybe you're much more flexible than i am maybe you're less so everyone's different no judgment there um suspension of judgment just see where it where it goes and maybe you can touch your left upper arm to your left cheek i cannot so this is where the pillow or the towel comes in so you can close this gap you fill it up <laughs> like the dentist fills up the hole we just fill the hole so you can press your left ear in a way against your left arm so and then we have this packet you have this nice little, little packet on top and now bend to the left. So again, the left elbow starts to come down, but because we have closed the gap, because we have this constraint, there can be or needs to be, we can find this movement in, in the upper part of the chest. So, um, that's what we can do now. So we can side bend and use the other hand, the right hand in my case, the free hand to feel what's happening in, in the sternum, uh, manubrium, like the, the things that can move in the, and, and the ribs and maybe the clavicles, maybe this little gap in between the clavicles or you could focus on the, on this little bony part of the clavicles where the, the little joint fake joint where the clavicle connect to the sternum does it move so we can look for movement in this area and see how it how it i need a break i need a short break uh, if you want to take this opportunity to take a short break please take it we take a short break and then return to the question of how does the side bending connect to the pelvis. And one move I could suggest to you is to sit on the chair only with your left cheek. So you move over. Safety first, make sure your, your, your chair does not buckle. Did we do this before? Like drop the, the right, drop the, the right one part of the pelvis off from the chair so this is a lengthening of the right side and a shortening of the left side oh my god this kind of connects doesn't it like before we shortened it from above and now we shorten it from below so when you drop your right 
hip joint off <laughs> the chair, your left side shortens. And then let's come back to this constraint up here where you hold your left upper arm to your left ear. I use both hands. I hug my head, hello, little head. So I reach around and then, and then I bring my left elbow to the left or bring your left elbow to the left and drop, drop your right, what is this, buttocks towards the floor. So, so now we have like, maybe you can see it in the video, if you have a mirror, you can see the, the bending. It's a proportional distribution of this movement. And how, how often? So we could switch on some music and then we could dance to the music. <laughs> this would be like a highly energetic version of this, of this uh, and maybe also a dangerous one. So if we come back um, to a sensory awareness experience where we um, really connect with <laughs> ourselves, is this, a, is, a, is this a legit language, connect with ourselves, so we have to do it slowly, so you can start, where do you initiate the movement? Do you move your head first? Do you move your elbow first? Do you move your pelvis first? What does move first? Or does everything move in unison? And how, what would happen if we would just drop the other, the other uh, buttock and, and stay with the left arm? L let's have a look. Wait, maybe in between, just come to sit first just on the chair. Is this a, is this a good sequencing I'm doing here? Is, am I still teaching correctly? In a way you can follow me. Can you still follow me? Okay, so um, we now, because, okay, so you see, I came back to the front of my chair because the sitting on the front of the chair now feels so different than in the beginning. My God, my, oh my, yes, hello. Wow, this is so different. Okay, and now continue with the idea I just had to drop the other. It's the same arm, the left arm. So again, close the gap, but this time we drop, we drop the left, the left buttock and turn to the left, it doesn't work. No, this doesn't work. Does it? Maybe. It works with lifting, so it's again side bending. <laughs> so, what I want to achieve with this is like give you ideas to play with, like experiment. Oh, I could try this and then see, oh, it still did make a difference. So, not what I expected, but it still makes a difference in, in how I sit, how I perceive myself. Should we do the other, should we do the other elbow? So, let's do the other, the other one together. To wrap this up, um, please reach around your head with your right hand. See, okay, the right hand goes on top, but can it also, can the right hand slide over to the left side of the face, left side of the head, to the left elbow, and, and see where it can go if you're, so this is like a self massage, a self caring movement where you uh, paint with the palm or the inside of your hand over your head. Ah, oh, this is so nice. see where you can go, like a loving touch. And then maybe your right upper arm can touch to your right cheek. For me, I can't. I'm this kind of person who's not that flexible, but I can fill the gap with a little towel. And there we go. So the gap is closed and then the movement is not a lengthening movement, but bring your right Elbow downwards and you could reach up with your left hand like in the beginning but this seems crude to me right now. This seems overly, overly too much. <laughs> so I, uh, we enter a space where we 
focus on smaller things, smaller connection, where we really check in with ourselves and feel, ah, enjoy this little side bending movement. And we could connect the shoulder girdle with the pelvic girdle by dropping, uh, which, which side do we have to drop? I guess it's the left one. So we could drop the left, yeah, this was, my guess is right, drop the left buttocks and drop the right elbow. So this is really a side bending movement and focus on this part that's usually quite inaccessible, the, the upper thoracic spine. Oh, yes. Oh, I just noticed I can let go in my... Wow, there was so much tension in my shoulder girdle. Ah, this can all go. Yeah, I don't need that, to be honest, just to, to hold this position. Oh, yes, so much tension gone. So this is a release. I would not call it release of trauma, but uh, a, a change of tonus of organization, uh, uh, the, the muscle activation uh, in a degree that's not needed, but the shoulders can just drop. Or maybe I should call it the shoulder drop. Mm. <laughs> And then a return. Oh, return to the front of your chair and again do this little side bending like we did in the beginning. The right earlobe towards the right shoulder and the left earlobe towards the left shoulder and just notice how much this movement has changed in your perception of how you sense movement. But maybe also, if you look in a mirror, or if you even record yourself, you could uh, see how much of a connection, of a proportional distribution of movement, of a connection, of how, how everything connects your head movements, connect with the uh, torso movements and with the movements of your pelvis. There was a, I, I once seen a little video by a, a Feldenkrais practitioner from New Zealand. He he wedged, I think he wedged a book underneath his pelvis and then he did a rotation movement. He pushed the, the knee forwards and backwards. So he introduced rotation into side bending. Great idea because we introduce movement options in a sequence, in an um, intelligent way. And thus, if it's intelligent, this is intelligent, it feels intelligent, it makes us feel smart. And actually, if it makes sense, it makes sense, right? <laughs> and in that way, we can learn what is our flexible side, what is our stiff side, which side can bend easier, our shorter side, which side can lengthen easier. And so we have a side that is easier to shorten and the side that's, of course, more difficult, more hard to shorten. Which one is it? And for me, clearly, clearly my right side is the easier side to shorten. And the left side is my stable side. I can really feel, wow, oh, this is so stable. Mm. If I, maybe, I, I can use it for, for what do we use a side, a side that bends easier, so, and the side that's more stable. I think it has something to do with standing. Why do we have that? Why do we have a side that is shorter and a side that is longer? Good question. Uh, leave your comments below. If you like this video, please leave your like. Thank you for watching. It was my pleasure to guide you through this little exploration in side bending. And um, see you in the next video.